What are strengths and limitations of cameras for the driving task? In your understanding, when you formulate the driving task as a vision task with eight cameras, you've seen that the entire, you know, most of the history of the computer vision field when it has to do with neural networks, what, just if you step back, what are the strengths and limitations of pixels, of using yeah. pixels to drive? Yeah, pixels, I think, are a beautiful sensory, beautiful sensor, I would say. <laughs> the thing is, like, cameras are very, very cheap, and they provide a ton of information, ton of bits. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a extremely cheap sensor for a ton of bits, and each one of these bits is a constraint on the state of the world. And so you get lots of megapixel images, uh, very cheap, and it just gives you all these constraints for understanding what's actually out there in the world. So vision is uh, probably the highest bandwidth sensor it's a mm -hmm. very high bandwidth sensor, mm -hmm. and um, I, I love that pixels is a is a constraint on the world. Yeah. It's this highly complex, uh, high bandwidth constraint on the world yeah. on the state of the world. That's yes. fascinating. And it's not just that, but again, this real real importance of it's the sensor that humans use. Therefore, everything is designed for that sensor. Yeah, the text, the writing, the flashing signs, everything is designed for vision. And so and you just find it everywhere. And so that's why that is the interface you want to be in, um, talking again about these universal interfaces. And uh, that's where we actually want to measure the world as well and then uh, develop software uh, for that sensor. But there's other constraints on the state of the world that humans use to understand the world. I mean, vision ultimately is the main one, but we, we're like, we're like, referencing our understanding of human behavior and some common sense mm -hmm. physics mm -hmm. that right. could be inferred from vision from, from a perception perspective, but it feels like we're using some kind of reasoning to uh, predict the world, yeah, not just the pixels. I mean, you have a powerful prior uh, sort right. of for how the world evolves over time, et cetera. So it's not just about the likelihood term coming up from the data itself, telling you about what you are observing, but also the prior term of like, where, where are the likely things to see and how do they likely move and so on. And the question is how complex is the, uh, the, the range of possibilities that might happen in the driving task? Right. That's still, is, is that to you still an open problem of how difficult is driving, like philosophically speaking? Mm. <laughs> like, do, do you, <laughs> all the time you worked <laughs> on driving, do you understand how hard driving is? Yeah, driving is really hard <laughs> because it has to do with the predictions of all these other agents and the theory of mind and you know what they're going to do and are they looking at you? Are they where are they looking? Where are they thinking? Yeah, there's a lot that goes there at the at the full tail of you know the the expansion of the nines that we have to be comfortable with. It eventually, the final problems are of that form. I don't think those are the problems that are very common. Uh, I think eventually they're important, but it's like really in the tail end. In the tail end, the rare edge cases. Yes. Uh, from the vision perspective, what are the toughest parts of the vision problem of driving? Um, well, basically, the sensor is extremely powerful, but you still need to process that information. Um, and so going from brightnesses of these pixel values to, hey, here are the three-dimensional world <laughs> is extremely hard. And that's what the neural networks are fundamentally doing. And so um, the difficulty really is in just uh, doing an extremely good job of engineering the entire pipeline, uh, the entire data engine, having the capacity to train these neural nets, having the ability to evaluate the system and iterate on it. Uh, so I would say just doing this in production at scale is like the hard part. It's an execution problem. So the data engine, but also the, um, the sort of deployment of the system such that it has low latency performance. Yes. So it has to do all these steps. Yeah, for the neural net specifically, just making sure everything fits into the chip on the car. Yeah. And uh, you have a finite budget of flops that you can perform and uh, and memory bandwidth and other constraints. And you have to make sure it flies and you can squeeze in as much compute as you can into the tiny. What have you learned from that process? Because it, maybe that's one of the bigger, like new things coming from a research background where there's there's a system that has to run under heavily constrained resources, right. has to run really fast. What what kind of insights have you uh, learned from that? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's if there's too many insights. You're trying to create a neural net that will fit in what you have available, and you're always trying to optimize it. And we talked a lot about it on the AI day, and uh, basically the the triple backflips that the team is doing <laughs> to make sure it all fits and utilizes the engine. Uh, so I think it's extremely good engineering. 
Um, and then there's all, all kinds of little insights peppered in on how to do it properly.